what do you think about the the time starting the having? I think it's like, look, it, it is what it is. Everyone, it, you, all the hype's built up, all this excitement built up, and then Bitcoin does a double in price and people go, oh, it's dead, it's no good. But then what happens over the coming weeks, months, it then starts to climb and then it actually like has an effect. If you've been here in cycles before, there's all this talk and chatter around the halvening and then people expect it to be a, a billions of dollars of liquidity comes through instant money overnight, but that never happens. So it's like, what's going to happen is people are going to be like, I thought the halvening was going to halve the amount of Bitcoins that were getting mined. And then now why didn't I double in price? What the hell's going on? I'm going to sell. That's what just people will say. So it's a, it's a nothing burger, but it's also a something burger because it takes time to kick in. So I'm kind of, I'm, indifferent to it i know what what it does i know what's going to happen so yeah but other than that i'm more excited about runes dropping which is meme coins on bitcoin when the halvening actually kicks in dude yeah i, wanna, I definitely want to hear your thoughts on the runes thing as well i want to say uh, a big what's up to jackson hunter really appreciate you man um happy that you're on stage dude happy you're on stage um how are you how are you doing hey thank you so much man i could not be better life is amazing <laughs> Heck yeah, dude. Heck yeah. How are you feeling on the market right now? Just your quick thoughts before we get into it. Um, you know what? Like some people are bearish, some people freak out, but if you're a trader, you can profit either way. So it really doesn't matter which direction it's going. Um, I was in a, a Litecoin 10X earlier, got out of that and then just rotated. And it's like, as long as you can see value before others can, um, or you can see erosion of value before others can then you'll make it. And so, like, it doesn't matter what the market does. It doesn't matter what's going on in the world either. Right on, dude. Also, um, just for people who don't know, um, I'd love to just get, like, a quick, like, quick intro. What would you say if, like, an Uber asked you, like, yo, Jackson, what you up to today? You'd be like, uh, well, this is what I do. Yeah, for sure. I mark up charts, and I also created a ticker of my own. Um, that takes up a lot of my time. People hit me up for help with their teams. Uh, but yeah, first and foremost, I'm a technical analyst and I'm a consultant for meme coins as well. Hey, yo, consultant for meme coins. Dude, I got, I got to know what that's about. We'll get to that in a second. Um, and guys, if you haven't already hit the retweet button on the space, get this out to more people. We'd love to fill this one out and get some TA in here. I mean, Jackson's in here. He's going to drop some alpha, hopefully cool crypto. Cool. Dude, how are you, man? I'll throw it over to you. How's yeah, it going? Good, good. I'm good. I'm good. Just uh, you know, looking the markets. Nothing. I guess we're going sideways. I guess we're we're not bleeding as much anymore. But I'm um, I'm looking at the Bitcoin ecosystem. Man. That's what I'm looking at. The the stacks L2 on Bitcoin. It, it, it got me excited. I like I like things that are, are new to me. I'm learning new things over there. So it's uh, looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, man. I was gonna ask you. Um, if I know you guys had that conversation with Blackwing. Blackwing, for people who don't know. Um, they're essentially like, you get to do like margin trading, but like little to no risk, dude. Like when we had a, t a chat with them, I was like trying to figure out how it's even a thing. How'd that conversation go? Yeah, it was, it was good, man. Uh, yeah. So Bla Blackwing is a protocol that, uh, that's built is the first, uh, a, a, a project built on, on, on the m m modular stack that, that's, uh, you know, if you, you, you could trade on, on that platform and it's supposed to be liquidation free. Liquidation fleet trading, which is absolutely nuts. I mean, I think they're saying it going about 30, 50 X, maybe even higher, and you don't get liquidated. Uh, I think, you know, what, what, we, what we got from them was um, how this works is you don't get liquidated because they use the um, li liquidity providers to show up your leverage. So if you are getting close to being liquidated, they use the, the liquidity being provided by the LPs to show up your, your trading so you don't get liquidated, which is mind-blowing to me because you could just, like, uh, just what, a couple of days ago, this weekend with the whole uh, um, Iran, Israel stuff with the market, crypto markets going absolutely nuts. If uh, Blackwing was live then, you, you have no fear, none, zero. So I'm bullish this protocol. I highly recommend um, you guys take a look at this. I, I have... The link, uh, I don't have link on my, it's on my page somewhere, man. Um, it's Black Wing, and the, it's not just about, you know, it's the founder and the co-founder. The founder uh, was, um, 
He used to work in Facebook, and he was part of the team that created uh, Facebook Stories. If you guys remember uh, Facebook Stories, I know like me, I'm an old person, so I, I use Facebook. And the co-founder was, uh, he used to work in Robinhood. If you're American, you know what uh, Robinhood is. It's one of the biggest trading platforms in the U.S. for newbies, and he was the person that created uh, the fractional, the fractional uh, uh, trading on Robinhood. So these guys are no freaking joke, but these are giga freaking brains, man. And that's why I, I, I'm bullish as hell on Blackwing, man. So if you... <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Let's go, cool. Uh, also, I'll give you your flowers, man. You've been making some content. you got a pretty terrifying mask, not going to lie, but I'm glad you're making videos, brother. And uh, Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's inspired, inspired by the, the, the near, near Maxi himself, man. I, I, I'm, I'm copying the near Maxi, so I'm, I'm, I'm following your lead, bro. Trying to do those little... Short video content, very, very, very short. Two minutes, two minutes. That's easy. You do the hard work, bro. You do the hard work. <laughs> <laughs> You're a legend, man. You're a legend. I love you. I love you. Think add that to your to your arsenal. Video contents for sure. The move. And guys, just for uh, some context before we dive fully into the space here, um, if you guys have any specific coins you're looking at, any kind of TA, anything like that, we'd love to dive into that world. If there's even uh, like Nate, like I know you're more into the um, NFT side, but you know you're talking about the. Um, I forgot what the word is, the runes. Um, if you're into that, if you have any charts you want to pull up, would love to get a breakdown of that. So just think about that as we're um, kind of rolling through these hands. want to throw it over to, uh, to Charlie. I saw his hand up a second ago. Yeah, no, I was just going to say from like a, a market review, I was talking of default trades the other day. Like this morning, actually, he was at a 300K uh, 10X Solana. Tell the story, bro. Tell the bro, story. This is insane mode. He was in a 300K uh, 10X Solana at 1.6 million leveraged. And he did Solana dipped from two hundred to one twenty. He's down one hundred and forty thousand dollars. I was like, oh my gosh, you giga brain! And he added liquidity so that he didn't get liquidated. He increased his he increased his position even more to protect from liquidation. He he rides it all the way back up to a plus forty thousand dollars. And instead of getting liquidated, he made fifty grand on the deal. And I was like, Wait, dude, that's what, what happened? Like, that was the resolution? Dude, that was the resolution. So I called him and I was like, bro, what the heck happened? Like, he posted this. Eh, that doesn't matter, guys. But I say this all to say, when you're in these type of positions, like, if you really want to get good at trading, you bid the blood. And make sure that if you start to get scared and you, like, okay, so this is one thing I will say if you guys are looking at the markets as a whole. If you have to reevaluate your position because the market, you didn't have good analysis in the beginning because you bet on companies and infrastructure teams and build out in future plans. You don't bet on the actual charts. Like, so when you, especially long-term holds, you know, there's different, there's swing traders and charters. That's a different thing that I'm talking about. I'm talking about like infrastructure plays and, and six months to one year holdings. And if you have to look at the coins again and be like, okay, maybe I was wrong. You probably weren't and the chart is lying to you. It's making you feel like maybe your position wasn't as strong as it was before. So one thing he'll say, you know, a great trader was, is that if your position and your analysis was right, when your mind was right and the market wasn't down, stay in the position. Because just because the coin is down, that means that it's a fire sale and not necessarily a bad company. And keep your bets, hedge your bets, keep your analysis true on why you were invested in that company in the first place. And I know that all of us probably have um, short-term trades. I only do long-term. So I'm, in, I'm invested in Pyth and our Pith. Some people call it Pith. And then Jupiter. And that's that's really it. Like um, Pith is the most boring trade in the world. All they do is they provide aggregated data to uh, Forex markets, um, uh, Solana. Uh, basically, anything that has smart contracts needs data. Like what time it is, what the price of BTC is, all that stuff. And that's what they provide to chains. And so... They're going to have airdrops from every single chain. So I'm just staked out the wazoo on Python. I'm just holding forever. So price action like this doesn't matter to me. And I just DCA down. You just keep buying in. I'm just like, no, more, more, more. And then, yeah, if I lose everything, well, sure. <laughs> that, that was sucky. So, yeah, just don't get, don't get shaken out. The markets are, are you snoring on me? Is that, am, I, am I boring you to death or something? What's, what's going on here? No, no, I love it. No, you're, you're absolutely right, but especially about the when, when the market goes down and you were saying, like, you know, you made the trade. When, well, hopefully you had a coherent mind when you made the trade and you can trust it in the future when, when uh, emotions ride up. But one thing that I noticed this year that's way different than last is, like, the consistent income, having having some money that's in your bank account. And I think I was, I was just over leveraged to the max, and I was just constantly in a state of fear and, like, total anxiety times a thousand. And that was probably my main issue is, like, I would make a trade and I would just be down 10%. I'm like, what's the point of holding this long? 
and it was just because I didn't have any liquid, and I was just over trading and over leverage. But uh, but those are, what? Uh, but but Charlie, yeah, wasn't snoring for sure, but one hundred percent, definitely not. That wasn't me. Um, definitely not. Was, <laughs> dude, you snored on me. Uh, no, dude. When stuff tanks, if you're not over leveraged, you just got a deal on an asset that you already believed in. When you're over leveraged on a tank market, you end up being a situation where you're like, oh no, my bags. And that's because you didn't hold liquidity to be able to re enter a market that you already believed in. So if you're freaked out at downturn, dude, you're over leveraged, bro. Like, you, you should be double downing on plays that you believe in with liquidity and not like all in on stuff that. Yeah, man, you're not expecting volatility, and unless you're looking at a five-year time horizon where it's going to rise back up on you, then it's like, okay, well, cool, it doesn't matter if it downturns, you can be over-leveraged, but, yeah, I, I, I don't know, don't be shaken out. would love to hear Jackson's thoughts on this, and Jackson, if you have any certain trades you're looking at, certain charts you want to pull up, if you put them under the tweet below, by the way, I can pin it at the top so people can have a visual, but would love to know your thoughts on the market in the short to midterm, if you have any trades, that, especially that you are looking to get in and out of in the next seven days or so. Um, let me know, man. Yeah, for sure. I, I like that, what Charlie was talking about. And I like that you guys pinned Crash to the top because I've been uh, learning a lot from Crash. He's a good buddy of mine. And he's been talking about alts and dominance and all this stuff. And I'm learning so much. It's really my special TA yeah, and identifying a little bit. Uh, okay, oh, sorry about that. Good enough, good enough. Um, yeah, so I was just saying I'm glad you guys pinned the crash because you can learn a lot from following crash. Um, the kid is an absolute whiz. And it's like, you if you have a play and you have conviction in it, there's no need to go into the telegram, freak out. And, and one thing that I wanted to say was that... Um, Crypto moves fast, okay? So if you want to learn how to trade, I say get into crypto because I started with the stock, or well, I started with Forex first, but, and then I did the stock market and then I did options. I was heavily into options. And so if you get into crypto, it's the same as trading everything else. It's just things happen at a, at a, a much faster pace. And so you're going to learn a lot. So yeah, you're going to take L's, you're going to tuition, but you're also going to, Gain experience way quicker than uh, if you trade in the stock market or whatever, currency pairs, whatever it is. And um, if you can just stay with it, man, like literally just stay in the fucking game, you will be successful. And, and that's the thing. It's like, yeah, most people lose in the long term, but most people lose in the long term with anything. Like, like, think about it, like trying to be a professional athlete, trying to be a great musician, trying to be the best plumber in the world. Most people are not because they give up. And, and it's like, I love trading because it's an even playing field. It doesn't matter what your fucking background is. If you stick with it and if you learn and if you don't blame people, you will be successful and it will change your life. And the thing I wanted to speak on also, this goes off of what Charlie was saying. I appreciate that, Charlie. It's that you don't have to make 100x in 24 hours. Like, like we have some time here. Yeah, you can um, do it in 12 these hours. <laughs> yeah, I mean, these markets move fast. And, like, you'd be surprised how quickly a 2x can compound if you do that a couple times, dude. So don't be... Don't be tricked out by like, and I know I have followers on Twitter or whatever, but like, but like, well, your family's killing, you know, wait killing for, each uh, other. Just FYI. Yeah, sorry, this kid's a free basketball in the house, man. What clown? Sorry, sorry about that. Yeah, no, it's all good, man. Um, so, yeah, you don't be tricked by, like, these people with big followers. Don't do what they say just because they have a big following. Like, really do your fucking research for yourself. And, and that way, you're not only going to be a better trader, but you're not going to blame others. So, you don't need to get 100x. Honestly, you could get 50% gains, and if you just compound those, you can turn a little bit of cash into a lot. Um, I could go on forever. I'm going to not do that. Um, <laughs> I already talk enough on YouTube and whatever. So trades I like right now, there's, there's a lot, but I'll, I'll, I'll keep it to, uh, I'll keep it to just a couple. So, and I'm not going to talk about my project. I think that's 
kind of lame to do. So a project I really like is uh, Ninja. It's called Shinobi Ninja Token. They are on Solana. I've posted about them countless times. Uh, they're part of the NKDS conglomerate. They're, they're just killing it, man. The team is legit. They just staked like a shit ton of soul on their validator. Um, good people behind it. So Ninja, one of my favorites. They're at like, I don't know, 14 million or 15 million market cap. Um, another gem that I like that nobody knows about is called Coin Dashboard. That's CDBD. I don't know a market cap it's at. Maybe like 150 or 140K. Super early. Super early. Like, do whatever the fuck you want with your money. I don't care. But Coin Dashboard is incredibly early. Uh, Wait, CDBD. You buy that one? It says Coin, Coin Dashboard? Yeah, yeah. So I don't have the CA because I'm, I'm driving. But I've posted on my, on my profile. Their website is CoinDashboard.io. It's on Solana. What do they do? But it's like, what do they do? It's so it's basically it's not a meme coin. It's like full utility. They already have an app on the the app store, the, the whatever the Android store as well. They are basically like a one stop shop for um, you can gauge sentiment on there. You can it's like it's like each coin has its own profile within this app. Uh, it, it's a trading, it's a tool for trading and, and I think it's going to help a lot of people. And like, it's so early on with them, they're still like hiring people. So not only could you trade it, you could also help them out if you're, uh, um, what are they looking for? Maybe like graphic designer, maybe like developer, but yeah, hop in their TG. It's incredibly early. So that's Ninja and then coin dashboard, um, yeah, I'm not going to say my project, even though I want to. Uh, man. Oh, uh, Stan is killing it. I don't know a, I don't know a funnier team. I don't know a, um, a better social media team than Stan. Um, yeah, those are my three. And are those, Jackson, are those, I appreciate your, um, appreciate the, uh, the coins. Um, for those, are you looking to be swing trading? Like, what type of trader? Are you in and out in a day? You wait a few hours, you go to a whole few weeks? Like, what kind of trader are you long term? Yeah, good question, man. Um, I, I do everything. Uh, I'll do a 15-second trade. I'll do a year-long trade. Um, with those, those are made to long-term plays. Um, you know, obviously, everybody has different goals, so you can do whatever you want. But to me, those are very early. And if, if, you, if you're able to hold, I think you might get quite a few Xs on those. Interesting. Dude, I really, really appreciate that breakdown. Um, and guys, that by the way... Yeah. Uh, sorry, what'd you say? No, I just oh, said yeah. yes. Yeah, for man, sure. no, I appreciate that a lot. Um, and yeah, I'm going to throw it over to Nate next. But yeah, guys, this style is kind of cool where you kind of just give them the mic and then let them kind of go off on the things they're thinking about. Just a little bit of length. That way they can kind of get in sort of their thesis for them. And then we can talk about like what type of trade it is. Like I know Nate has had some, I mean, dude, that dude held an NFT like two years too long one time. But then he's also been in, in and out of a trade in like six seconds. So the man's a total savage proper degenerate um, out there in Australia. Nate, I'm going to throw it over to you. Let me know what you're thinking about crypto or NFTs, um, ordinals, like whatever whatever it is you're spending your time on. Well, thank you. So, yeah, most of, most of my time effort at the moment is ordinals and then runes, which are upcoming. The main thing for ordinals is these are tw – we kind of spoke about this on a, on just a, a call, like just a, just a call between ourselves. It's like it feels like – NFTs 2021, 2022, everyone hates NFTs. Everyone hates the word NFTs, but everyone hates them because they weren't the one that bought the board for 0.08 and wrote it up to 80 ETH. Um, and right now it's almost just like on easy mode, buy something that's got a little bit of like um, community around it, get free stuff. The free stuff raises in value, get more free stuff, which just compounds, which is crazy. But then throw in the fact that runes, which is basically going to be meme coins, on Bitcoin, which is launching on the halvening date. And that's like, what, three, four days time? So it's going to be like just a, a meme coin, like a, just a shit coin casino on Bitcoin. And it's going to be just straight, nuts, straight degeneracy. I'm actually setting up a Bitcoin node right now so I can take advantage of it when it happens because all a lot of these coins are going to be for free to to uh, bench, mint, but you, call, you etch them. 
And basically, imagine if you could get some of the very first meme coins that would have been on Ethereum or Solana for free because that's how they're being distributed. All you've got to do is know how to actually kind of get them and have the tech. There will be tools, but the tools are going to be sort of overrun. So I'm kind of taking my bet that way. Look, it could turn into millions of dollars. It could just be a complete waste of time. But when you have the big chain, the, the big daddy himself, Bitcoin going, hey, let's open the meme coin casino. There's going to be a bunch of people that want to gamble on them, that want to get in on them. And then that's going to be good. It's also just seeing what's happening because I've got exposure to all of the, not all of them, but a bunch of the pre-runes. So ordinals that will be burnt or whatever, which will get runes. So I've got a bunch of exposure there um, and shit's just crazy. Like that's what I'm focusing on because that's where a lot of attention is. Then what's going to happen in two or three months time, they're going to die off. Volume's going to die down. People are going to bang the like sort of sort of cheer and go, um, runes are dead the same way that said ordinals are dead. Then people get pissed because they thought ordinals were dead and then OMBs ran to a Bitcoin. Node monkeys run to a, a Bitcoin and you could have gotten them for basically free. So that's oh, by the way, what I'm Nate, doing. What does, uh, what does basically free look like for Bitcoin? Like average minting and pricing, like how fast does the network? I've never really used Bitcoin in a degenerate type of fashion. Like what does that look like? And then also, yeah, like what is free considered to be in Bitcoin? Is free like $1,000 or... Uh, so if you talk about free in terms of like the actual runes that is happening, they'll literally be free apart from the transaction cost, which might cost you 100, 200 bucks, whatever it is, but you might be able to get a thousand million, however many tokens there are. But free, when I talk about free things on Bitcoin, anything that's under a hundred bucks, a point zero 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 something is basically free in my eyes. Like Bitcoin puppets were free and they ran up. Um, sort of OMBs, you could have gotten in them in really early. Node monkeys, I think, were a 0.02 or something, and they ran to a Bitcoin. Like, there's a lot of crazy things that have just happened because you've got this high conviction from people that hold them that think they're going to go a lot higher. And one thing that it's like, it's I, I hate banging banging the drum of like NFTs, but Doodles and Cool Cats they ran to like 20 ETH a piece. We're currently sitting for like oh, um, to Node monkeys and puppets. At around seven to eight ETH, and you're going, Cool Cats and Doodles weren't the blue chips. They were kind of like mid chips, blue chips, whatever you want to call them. And you're going like, they in the hype of the run last cycle ran up to a 20 ETH equivalent. So where the hell do you think something that is a blue chip in an ecosystem that's having its first cycle can run to? So that's where I'm kind of placing my bets. And I'm like, oh shit, it does feel early. And a lot of people that bought them don't want to pay to hand this shit. Hence why you're seeing just, if you look at the charts, the charts look ridiculous. They're just, just up and to the right. Right on, dude. I appreciate that. That's great. So, yeah, the NFT market, I haven't spent as much time looking at that from a trading perspective. When you said Cool Cats and Doodles, were you also talking about a current thing you're looking at for them? Uh, or a current trade? Is there enough No, that, it's, just, it's just looking at the past cycle. And when things got stupid, Cool Cats and Doodles ran to 28. Apes ran to like 150th or whatever. And when you look at those prices and equivalent, could you see a Bitcoin equivalent of a Doodles or a Cool Cat running to a a previous doodles or a cool cat equivalent it's literally just looking at what's happened in the past on a different chain and seeing what can happen on a new chain with an equivalent tiered project and there's just upside galore word okay cool and also i was gonna in a second you're right i'm gonna throw it to charlie but um would love for you to just give like a quick 30 45 second breakdown of what runes are just so that people have like a visual of it if they don't know but i'm gonna throw it to charlie first charlie Wait, you pulled the switch on me. You said, give me a 45 second. Oh, oh, you know, I, I can do that too. I can go. No, you're good. No, me. no, you're good. You're good. Uh, no, I was going to, I was going to ask. So like the NFT markets are tough for me. So I was going to get your take, you know, Nate, like the reason why I, I came up in the NFT market for two years and then left because of the NFT market. So as the asset, since there's only 10,000 of the asset, what ends up happening as it becomes more and more expensive, it becomes more and more illiquid as it goes up the margin. So it's like the more successful a project becomes, the more illiquid it becomes. Like the people that can buy a CryptoPunk are like very few and far between until you really get into like fractionalized trading. This is why with stocks, when they go up in value, they split. They split so that it doesn't price people out because they realize that, like, you know, market cap for it to keep growing, you have to actually, like, make it available for people that have that amount of money. 
So I just felt like NFTs, they, the model is broken inherently that as they increase in value, they, they, they increasingly become illiquid as they go up the scale. So it felt like for me, like meme coins, that's the reason the market caps are insane. They're just so, they're so available because you can buy any proportion of them that you'd want. So I, I just felt like NFTs inherently, like especially with the whole like community oriented thing. And I used to be like a maxi in NFTs, but when you have like so much sentiment build, built around it, like it's not just a hold. There's like this idea intrinsically that you have to build a community and then that community becomes your biggest haters and your proponents for your downfall. So I always just felt like NFT markets are really hard to trade in comparison to a coin market. But do you think otherwise? Do you, do you think that they're still a good bet? I look until I really took some big bets in ordinals. I would have said the exact same thing. The thing about the ordinals market. Uh, okay, if you look at Bored Apes, Bored Apes made a bunch of money, but they made almost just as much off the airdrops, um, token allocations, NFTs that they got. With my Bitcoin Puppet, I've received almost as much value from the airdrops and things around it than the Puppet itself. Like, I agree that once you get, uh, when you've got a collection of 10,000 and they're all at a Bitcoin apiece, that really does limit to the, the amount of people that can get in, but the amount of things that you get airdropped, allocated, and just given to because you're a part of that ecosystem is is like crazy. You almost see this with what pudgy penguins are most likely going to do with the pudgy token. People holding pudgies because they're getting airdrops for tokens and things. So the liquidity that you want from it is coming from the external source, and that NFT is the the thing that you're holding that gives you access to those things. So it's not necessarily le leveraging or like not leveraging out, not selling out of the asset, but using that asset to then give you access to all of that stuff in between. But a hundred percent, you're going to make way much more on a meme coin than an NFT. I just like the JPEGs of pictures. A lot of people get mad at what OMBs and puppets look like. A lot of people got mad at apes, which then just, just push push things forward because if everyone hates it then a lot of people want to buy it um and it's irrational but then saying that as much as i like um nfts and jpegs i'm going to sell them all this cycle and make sure i stack some actual gains and off the, off rent them into fiat like i'm not gonna i'm not gonna bag hold these i'm not gonna round trip them i'm gonna sell them all i just know right now i get more almost more from my ordinals in terms of value from airdrops and things than I do the actual ordinal appreciation itself. Hence why the value keeps going up because people are like, shit, if I just held it, I would have gotten 10 grand worth of airdrops. Shit, maybe I should buy one. And that's that cycle and that profit then rot rotates back into them and they just keep going like that. True, 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 true. Right on, dude. I appreciate that. Um, cool. I want to throw it over to you. And uh, ask you, like what your thoughts are on the airdrop market, especially the social fly. I'm starting to see it a little bit on the near protocol. There's a couple of companies that are running with the social fly. It's doing pretty well. I've uh, been happy because one of the videos that I tagged um, them on is one of the content pieces that a bunch of social fly farmers came to. So they like pumped my video and my post. So I was down with it. <laughs> but what are your thoughts on airdrops that are relevant right now? If, there, if, if people are listening for the first time, should they be looking at a certain one right now? Uh, I think I think to be safe. Um, I would just focus on the 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 ones I know for uh, the, the the ones I know for a fact that they, they're gonna do airdrops, right? I think if you guys have noticed, I was looking at the chart, um, actually Coin Gecko, and you see the number one trending token right now is Celestia. Celestia is up 15% versus Bitcoin. It's up. Uh, it's destroying Bitcoin right now. The past 24 hours, it's absolutely crazy. This project was just nine dollars, uh, nine dollars like 24 hours ago. Now it's 11.7. The reason why it's pumping like this, I did get some inside info, um, you know, about. Don't know how legit this is, but whoever told me kind of hinted at this, and it seemed like it is because the volume and the it's just from nowhere. Celestia train train number one at 11.29. It, it up 15 percent past 24 hours. There's possibility that they're gonna uh, okay, based on what you told me, they, they're gonna airdrop TS takers some uh, berry chain. Berry chain is one of the massive projects. This guy's raised like probably 80 90 mil. Um, and it's it's a it's a very different project that is it's a three token ecosystem, so three tokens in one in one project. That's what that's how it's gonna be big, it doesn't doubt about it. It's uh 
Um, and uh, I think that's what his speculation is. But what he said is going to happen. It's going to happen. I, I believe. I believe so. In addition to multiple other airdrops. So if I was going to tell someone to get into airdrop game right now, I would say focus on three three projects: Saga, um, uh, Celestia, and 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 um, and Dimension. The reason I say this because I know for a fact uh, Dimension already has confirmed. 13 already confirmed 13 airdrops confirmed for dimension stickers uh for saga saga uh founder actually sp spoke to founder uh a couple days ago and she confirmed a, a hundred plus airdrops no joke a hundred plus airdrops for, for saga stickers and if you are start saga sticker right now they go to di distribute uh the unclaimed uh saga tokens to the current stickers and the snapshot to be taken before um, before April, uh, end of April. Uh, remember, this Saga project is no joke. This project broke two or three records on on Binance. Uh, when you uh, they had the Binance launch pool, it, uh, Saga has launched like uh, been like, it's been like seven days from now, and um, it launched seven days ago, and they broke the record for uh, amount of money raised was over eighteen billion dollars. Is what they uh, is, is what uh, the, the uh, Binance launch pool raised. In addition to it broke the most the most number of um uh people that joined lo the launch pool i think it was over four hundred thousand or something crazy so this project has deep liquidity has deep roots it's also a gaming blockchain that's why i actually love this project because it actually is a, it's it's a it's a it's a project that uh they they're gonna um um a lot of projects are gonna come build on them and uh, launch their games on them and we as stakers get rewarded with their tokens. Celestia, I say, is the, is the big dog when it comes to the, all these products are all, all, all under the um, modular ecosystem. And they're the first ones to come out like this and they're doing amazing things that actually, there's gonna be, uh, I saw some tweets from the COO talking about Bitcoin uh, going modular. So they, they, there's Bitcoins coming to Celestia. So let's say go, go into Bitcoin, uh, either or. But uh, so those three is what I'll say focus on. There is a lot of noise, a lot of projects out there uh, that do airdrops. It's just like uh, nature was saying with you know, if you own the puppets and you know you got a lot of airdrops there. Yes, a lot of pro a lot of projects do airdrops. The socialify game to me, it's dying down a little bit because of the last three projects haven't done well. G uh, gaming GMRX did very 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 well for uh, for us. We made a good amount of money from G GMRX. After that, block was the flop. Uh, every was a flop. Um, uh, even Mojo, uh, I think he listed, but we haven't claimed yet, and that seems like a flop too. Why did they flop? So uh, they, they they didn't reward. So okay, okay, okay. So I think the problem is these projects, right? They don't know where to start. They if you if the reason why G, G, um, GMRX did well because they they had a lot of people. Um, 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 trying to use it, trying to farm it, but it wasn't as many as as Block did or every right. So these projects they give you seven to ten days or fourteen days to to uh, farm their, their their projects, but they get greedy because they they get so much attention. They should stop at seven. They will say, oh, let's extend it two days, extend it three more days. So the more you extend the farming, the more people jump on it. So there's no way you can airdrop. A million wallets, right? So the it's very it's very it's it, that one done well. That one done well. Um, I'll give an example right now. You guys are gonna be blown away. Look, this is this is no joke. This is what I do. This is what I'm in. <laughs> one of the people that we know. I'm not gonna say his name. Um, uh, uh, Charlie knows who he is. Um, but uh, he um, his airdrop from every was worth two hundred freaking thousand dollars. No joke. As of claim day, his airdrop is worth less than 9k. <laughs> that is a game we play when it comes to that. That's the reason why the 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 noise is going down a lot. I could tell because the of course, look, there's still <laughs> there's still projects out there. Socialify, we know, um, coming out. Uh, there's one that just came out today. I, I haven't jumped in it, but there's two of them that we are bullish on. One of them, one of them is Bubble by imaginary ones and other one is somo somo was actually uh, created by the guys that created portal 
portal token. Uh, uh, they came out last year. They did very, very well. So they created uh, like, like a smaller version, which is called SOMO. These two protocols are, are, are bullish because it, 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 it protects the user from you getting your account banned. And it's, the gamified portion is much better, much better. Uh, the bubble one is my favorite because actually you're playing the game. You're actually playing an actual game itself. Then you earn bubbles on the game. The more bubbles you earn in the game, the more air drops you get. And the game is not easy. It is not easy at all. Um, I'm not sure when it ends, but I've gotten my, my, my family into this stuff. My kids play this game all the time. Uh, but uh, I love that because it, it encourages you to use a product. I mean, that's why I like this one. Because it doesn't uh, just focus on, on uh, people with big accounts. Because what's that happening is people from Web2. And remember, Web2 social, uh, social influence is 10 times bigger than Web3. We have people with 10, 10 million dollar followers coming to Web3 to come and farm the airdrops now. You can't compete against that. There's no way. There's no way you compete against guys from Web2 with a, with a massive following. But the game, but this bubble, you got to play the game and earn those points. Then when the airdrop comes, the more points you earn in the game is converted into your airdrop. So it's a, it's a lot going on. But if I was going to tell a newbie, I'll say stress-free. I'm telling you right now, I... I'm probably going to make the most money I've ever made from these three projects, Tia, Dimension, and Saga. Because, like I said before, Tia airdrops are mad, crazy airdrops. Uh, Saga uh, <laughs> airdrops are 100 plus within the next year or two. Then you have Dimension, 30 airdrops confirmed. If you have those three in, in your arsenal, you're golden. That's it, bro. Dude, thank you so much for the alpha. Seriously appreciate it, man. Um, I have a question for Jackson, but uh, and then also going to throw it to MSB. Appreciate you guys being uh, so patient. Um, but uh, first, just want to reset the room real quick. Still got like twenty minutes ish or so, and then we're going to jump into an AMA discussion style thing with uh, with DeFi Olio talking about smart wallet stuff. So that's coming up here at the end of the hour. But um, yeah, just guys, if you haven't followed the speakers on the stage, these guys are all killing it in their own areas of the market. Everyone's got their own spot, you know, um, and they're killing it. They're just killing, it. and I've had a pleasure to have them on spaces. And if you're enjoying the space, by the way, you can, uh, you can hit the retweet button on the space, bottom right corner. It's a little message icon with number five, might be purple or white. Um, and make sure to give Wolf Web 3 a follow because we got spaces literally every single day. Uh, every single day. And cool, by the way, if you guys are interested in the airdrop stuff, cool host spaces uh, on the weekends. And, uh, man, he literally is there for hours answering all questions pertaining to airdrops. Definitely um, go check out his profile and, uh, and tune in because he kills it. And uh, while I'm saying thank you to everybody, uh, got to gotta say thank you to our sponsors. Couldn't do it without them. If you're into Bitcoin especially, you know, Quantum Expeditions, they're trying to become the biggest Bitcoin mining company in the world. Their SEC filed. They're legit. You know, their, Doug, uh, their CEO, Doug Hardwick, has been in oil and gas for like two decades. He's shopping around for top electric rates in, in, uh, in Texas because that's what gets you the best returns for miners, you know, which is you maybe wouldn't know that. If you weren't like in the game like that, so that's kind of one of the things that uh, you learn as you're trying to do that and uh, you know wade into the waters of Bitcoin land. Uh, but they're on the cutting edge of everything in Bitcoin mining, so that's pretty rare to find. And uh, they're long-term investment, you know, five years or more. Not not the decent plays we've been talking about today. <laughs> Definitely not one of those. Um, but their goals to go public. They want to be you know on the stock exchange, one of the biggest in the game. So if you uh, you know if you're interested in this investment, we pin something at the top. Um, if you if you invest, it's you're getting an actual piece of the company, so you grow with them. It's not like buying an NFT where you're kind of just getting an asset that you can buy or uh, buy or sell. Hopefully, if it goes up, kind of thing. Um, so yeah, pin it up at the top, give it a look. But I'm gonna throw this question over to to Jackson real quick because he brought it up earlier and it's been on my mind. It's been sitting on my mind this whole time, just marinating. What kind of conversations? Like, what what are the conversations happening when you have a console call, some type of advisory with a meme coin? Like, what are they asking you? And then. Definitely, what are you telling them, bro? Like, what's the, what's the alpha on those conversations right there? What does that sound like? Um, it's really simple, man. It's all marketing at the end of the day. And, like, I've only launched one coin, but I'm one for one. Uh, I think, in my eyes, I hit it out of the fucking park. And it wasn't just myself. I had a team. Um, once we started getting traction, a bunch of people started reaching out, and they wanted a piece of it. And, um yeah, it's going to have a, a bright, bright future. We, I mean, dude, we secured a celebrity endorsement through prison. So, like, we were negotiating that deal for, like, a week, literally um, in contact what? with... What do you mean, bro? Did you say through prison? Like, like hard... Yeah, so I'm not going to... 
I'm not going to say the ticker because I think it's lame to like self promote like that. But yeah, so we were up like all night for a week straight, literally um, signing a dude from Hollywood that's currently incarcerated. And it worked out like we were able to, to, to please both parties. And, and now I've made new friends and it's cool. It's super dope. So like after that, people, you know, they, they asked me for like, Oh, how do we, how do we send this fucking thing going? And like, the truth, the truth of the matter is creating a meme coin, a successful one, is incredibly difficult. It, it takes um, hitting on all cylinders. You, you need a team. You need each person knowing their role. And it's like these things don't just happen just by luck and like just happenstance. Um, with our team specifically, we had a group. Of, I mean, at first it was just three of us, it, like really modest beginnings. And then people started, you know, we started attracting other eyes and eventually we had like a marketing agency and all these influencers, everybody you guys know. And it, it just like, it's because everybody knew their role and they know how to play it. Like me personally, I know nothing about like software development, code development, none of that shit. I know how to attract eyes and I know how to grow a community and I know how things go viral. Um... So how do question how do conversations go? Man, I uh, I've already had like ten DMs today. Um, it's it's okay. So <laughs> there's a there's a book called I believe it's called Purple Cow on business marketing. If you guys are curious, um, basically you need something that is going to. Imagine this. Imagine you're scrolling on TikTok or whatever the social media platform is. You need something that's going to be a scroll stopper. They have to, like, just now I just entered a trade, like, literally three minutes ago, and it's because of this, all right? Um, it's, it's, uh, it's like a knockoff on Supreme. It's ticker S. I just bought into it. So if you're scrolling, what is going to make a person, the average person, stop and be like, and captivate them, and be like, oh, what is that? And then within five to ten seconds, are they able to understand what it is, what the narrative is, what the imagery is? And then, on top of that, is there an emotional response? Is it evocative enough? Do they relate with it? Um, do they remember what it is? Do, do they laugh? Dude, so many times, people will show me, I mean, under my tweets, they show me, all day long, right? In my DMs, under tweets. And if I laugh hard enough, I'll typically buy a bag. And it's as simple as that. Like, you just need to, you just need to create something that is going to captivate people enough and be evocative enough to the point where they feel like your product, because it is a product, is worthy of an exchange of monetary value. So you got to create something that is and it's like a sweet spot, right? It's really a sweet spot because you want it to be different, but if it's different, it's difficult for it to be universally recognizable, right? So it, it's got to be different. It's got to be captivating. It's, I mean, in my eyes, you want it to be something that has longevity. So it's evergreen, like as opposed to just a, a breaking news event, you know? Um, and, 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 and at the end of the day, you need a team of believers because if you have guys that believe and they don't have terrible attitudes, they're not all pussies. Like if you have guys that think there's no limit to how high your project can go, I mean, that's like half the battle right there. Um, you really need guys to believe you need a team of delusional people. They need to be delusionally confident. That's what it takes to, to have a successful token. True, dude. Thanks for the breakdown. Um, and before I go to Charlie, I want to make sure MSB gets something in here. He's been super patient. I appreciate you, man. Uh, I want to throw it over to you. Also, if you have any specific coins you're looking at, certain trades that you're looking at, definitely let us know. MSB, your mic is off, by the way, if you're talking. Yeah. I think you got to give him yeah. the mic. It says listen. Yeah, he is in show. Yeah. Sure he's, he's, not, no, he's, he's talking right now. Yeah, um, I, looks, looks like a listener to me. Yeah, it's your job. How are you guys doing today? Doing well, man. Oh, how are you? I'm alright. I'm alright. Cool, cool. How are you doing? Good evening, everyone. 
Um, so uh, basically, the market has been um, has been crazy lately. Um, I think Cool Crypto has pretty much said pretty much of what I wanted to say before. Um, the narrative about the social part is that most of these project things don't really don't really get to see to understand how they need to um to them to them they feel that. They need to come up with a strong policy. It's a bit, it's a bit hard to hear you. It's a bit muffled. Can you hear me now? Uh, say something else. Can you hear me now? Yeah, it's, that's a little bit better. Okay, good. So what I'm trying to say is that the social side thing is dying down because um, two or three projects are not doing pretty much well because of what is happening. Um, to some people, they'll say, okay, because of how the market is, or to some people say, okay, they have actually not launched during this um, deep. But it could be told you that um, what they're actually doing is that they are farming users for for PR, PR stunts. That's my belief, because if they actually come up with the right policy or the right guns, say, okay, um, how can this community um, stick with them to the end? That's why Bubble stood out in a way because they make you engage with your product game. That's why you're playing with the game and you get to understand that. Oh, to me, I, I've seen to understand that this Bubble happens to be um, one of the good experiences when it comes to what the game. If it happens to be a game is coming on board because a whole lot of web two games are out there and they're seeing, uh, they're seeing a whole lot of this project coming into web three. So what I'm trying to say is that most of the social files are going to die down in a couple of months because the community see what is going on and most of these project developments are not seeing the value to see what they can actually offer to the community. And yes, regarding tokens that are standing around there, just like what Kuku to say, um, Sega, Celestia and Dimension. I'm very bullish on Dimension because, as I told uh, Kuku to a couple of space that we had, one of the most things that actually stood out for me for Dimension is the gas fee. The fact that um, people are not seeing that that's the next big thing in Dimension. I don't think people think people actually really look on it. So um, that's pretty much my take um, regarding looking at projects moving forward. Awesome, I appreciate that take a lot. Um, I want to throw it over to Charlie. I know your hand was up a second ago. Yeah, I was just going to talk about, you know, I was in a, a meeting the other day just talking about these two guys are planning basically a meme coin and how to get it to rip. And some of the thoughts that they had, I feel like, you know, probably go into whether or not a meme coin is a good buy to. A lot of it is like, how understandable is the meme without understanding the language it was created under? Like, does the meme convey emotion internationally in comparison to the United States? And that was, like, some of the conversation. I thought this was an interesting thing. So, with dogs and cats, it's internationally understood and the emotion is felt instantly without understanding the English of the bio, understanding any of the write-ups. The memes are instantly digestible to any walk of life because everybody has touch points. And I think for, you know... A lot of if you're putting together a meme thesis, I think a lot of it is like how good are the memes, how relatable are they, how much can you understand it in a single take, and even you know I was talking to some company the other day, they're they're doing a 99 cents token. Um, it's supposed to be like Arizona iced tea. It's programmed, you know, it was a play off of the Wiener token, you know, Costco hot dog. And um, but one of the issues in the in the meeting was is they said the problem is with that token is that you only understand it from an American perspective. And in, in that, it's hampered. And so I think for meme tokens, and I don't know what I am or S MSB said, I may be going way off topic in comparison to what he said, but I couldn't hear him doing it. But I think that those, some of the, those are some of the things you should be looking at. Like, what are the impressions in comparison? And Ansem said this really well. He said, if you look at the market sentiment, if the market is down, but the people are still bullish, and this goes into, like, miladies. So, like, when you're looking at community-oriented stuff instead of infrastructure and tech. If, like, and Frank said this too, if you look at a community that's community-oriented, and this is like meme coins, NFTs, if they're, like, anti-fragile and they have a tendency to treat, like, down markets as a laugh or, like, a place to laugh instead of a place to cry. And this happens with people who are, like, really mimetic 
it at their nature and they take like losses and they make laughs and memes out of them and then they laugh through them that's like anti-fragile meme coins and anti-fragile communities that are typically going to have longevity in comparison to when you see communities that when they're down you start to see bear posts all the time these are communities that are in it for the wrong reasons and they don't actually have the sentiment of the community they're actually just interested in like the top end uh, production of like making money so I was just going to add that I don't, you know, I, I literally never invest in meme coins and I never will. I want to sleep well. And if you invest in a meme coin, I, I, I've, I've heard the stories. <laughs> People, they don't even sleep well when they're invested because there's just such an opportunity. I, dude, did you guys see that post on that guy? He posted he was 3x on Pepe and on the downturn, he lost a million dollars. What? Wait, what do you mean? Okay, you guys can just keep going. Let me find this post real quick. That was the dude, like, very vague. He was oh, like yeah. suicidal. No, he was like suicidal. Cool, didn't you see oh. that? The guy was like basically saying, he was like, um, I'm thinking of taking my own life. I was 3x long on Pepe. There was a downturn in the market, and I just lost a million dollars. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, I saw that. Yeah, it was unfortunate. I, keep, I mean, he didn't kill himself. I mean, I just... Well, I mean, I guess the million dollars is unfortunate, too. That's, that's you yeah, know... Uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah. Jeez, dude, that is nuts. Nate probably knows about that. Me and him both been in the NFT game trying to trade, and we've both been down very bad, I'm sure, many times. But MSB, that's why you, uh, you turn on your mic for a second. I want to throw it back over to you. No, it's about the main coin that uh, Charles Cook talked about. I mean, it's kind of crazy because how the hell do you survive that? It's crazy. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, it's very difficult to get through that. Very difficult to get through that, 100%. Um, uh, listen, guys, uh, we appreciate everyone on the stage so far. It's been such a great conversation. Um, we're about to pass this off. We only have a few minutes, and we're going to roll into a uh, talk about... Jeez, was that English, that last two sentences? Uh, like, my brain was, like, half working, and my mouth was barely... Oh, no, so <laughs> I actually loved it, dude. As soon dude. as we started mumbling, I thought, what a savant. <laughs> like, dude, what... what? <laughs> <laughs> oh. We don't mumble out here. All right, but anyways, I was going to say, uh, we'll do some last takes here, some last coins that we're looking at, and then we do have a uh, discussion here on smart wallets. We have a, there's a company called DeFi Olio who kind of taps into that world of rewards for, for using a wallet, which is relatively unique. I really haven't heard that much in the crypto world. It's pretty cool. It's pretty degenerate, I would probably add in there. So excited to talk to them, and so I would love for people to stay in there. We're going to be there for another hour after this space. Um, so make sure you stay up, and then um, any speakers who want to stay up, for sure, can stay up. If you want to speak, throw up a request, but I want to give the mic over to all the speakers. I'll start with Nate. Um, any last thoughts here, last things they wanted to throw in, any coins or trades that they're eyeing for this last week um, before we move into that conversation? For me, um, I've already got my bags packed with it, but when runes drop, it's going to be pups, the pup token, dollar sign PUP. This thing is like, trading decent before runes happens if runes actually hit crazy market caps it's, it's going to be nuts i'm actually buying some on solana just so i've got an easy way to kind of um dump my bags if it does pump it's literally flip of a coin could go up could go down but um that's what i'm kind of bullish on it's going to be the meme coin on bitcoin wow that was the convicted answer right there okay hold on what was the ticker again dollar sign pup p-u-p so as in like, yeah, pups, like is, pup. pups is a move. That's one hundred percent, dude. I can confirm, can consolidate. Sorry, I didn't oh wow, all right, got the support of Mister Charlie Mark, connoisseur of meme coins. Very cool. All right, Nate, really appreciate that take, brother. Uh, oh yeah, I was gonna ask right before you um, we move on. Um, do you have like, that that thirty to forty five second breakdown of the runes, just so people know? So in its simplest form, what runes are going to be is it's an easier way for meme coins to be indexed and uh, sort of fractionalized on Bitcoin. Because right now, if you want to buy a BRC20, which is like an ERC20 on Bitcoin, you can only buy what's packaged up. So if someone's selling five, you can only buy that five. But now it's going to be easier to break them down, index them and trade them and then build some stuff. So it just, it makes the fungibility of a token much more fungible than it currently is. Currently right now, they're almost like NFTs. Um, less FTs, so that's better, more fungibility. Right on, right on. And Charlie, I just got you a DM um, if you want to just check it real quick. Cool, I'm going to throw it over to you. Any last thoughts, any last things you want to throw in there, things people should be looking at 
Uh, just pay, pay attention to the uh, Bitcoin e ecosystem, L2 ecosystem, and pay attention to the Celeste ecosystem, uh, the m modular uh, ecosystem. That's it. Those two. Right on, right on. Appreciate it. Charlie? Yeah, I was just going to say the same thing. Like, one thing to look out for is stacks. I feel like we've been talking, we had a podcast with them this morning, and um, they're about to release Nakamoto, if you guys don't know anything about it. So, basically, so, like, the Lightning Network on Layer 2 BTC doesn't actually facilitate smart contracts. It facilitates trade, but not smart contracts. Well, the stack system, you know, they have their native token, and, uh, like, 60% of it's locked up as just rewards for the BTC miners that are, like, Layer 2, and I'm not going to get into the technical stuff, but... So far, they've been building on top of BTC, and they still have 10-minute uh, transaction finality. So imagine all of the infrastructure that's happened on Stack so far, and transactions still take 10 minutes. So right after the halvening, transactions are about to take seconds, and they're through. Wait, wait did, did you just say the halvening? Yeah, what do you call it? Are you about to roast me? Are you about to roast me, dude, or what? I mean, ro get the roasting on. Continue. <laughs> I feel like this balance was fun. No, 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 no. Go ahead and keep going. <laughs> okay, I see how it is. I see how it is. A rhetorical question, a rhetorical roasting, and then you don't even say it. Um, n no. So, so is it having? I, I can't even continue anymore. Is it happening? Is it having? Having? Because honestly, I've said that to their company like twenty times. So either I look like a literal no, idiot or a have genius. You, have you actually, when we were talking to them, literally so many times. I can't overemphasize Charlie, how many times I went back. Okay, don't even do this. Dude, you're what's, good. It's interchangeable. What's the man. right one, guys? <laughs> is it having or is it having? It's interchangeable. Having, having. Anybody else want to want to keep anybody? Please, I need a little more confidence yeah, it, than interchangeable. Yeah, I just, they're both, yeah it's they're both. Work. It's interchangeable. I, I would say, and maybe in our meetings with Sax, we'll we'll roll with having. But I think it's I think it's funny either way. I was just I was just messing. But also, um, Charlie, check your uh, check the DMs if you can check into the Wolf Web Three account check DMs. The DMs. Come check on, bro, the check DMs. the DMs. Come on, bro. <laughs> <I will> not <laughs> check. No, 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 they're they're they're, co they're coming. I already I already messaged them. He said he's going to be here in just a second. So, oh, um, are you sure? No. Yeah. I, I got I'm a sure. different message. Wait, you got a different message? Yeah. What did you get? I got a different, totally different message. I don't know what you're talking about. Just DM me. But what okay. I was going to say is, guys, so for Stacks, they have a 10-minute transaction throughput right now, and they're about to increase to seconds. So imagine all the infrastructure that's happening with Alex Labs. Like, Alex, if you look at Alex BTC, they have $140 million locked up in TVL right now. They just lacked, uh, launched the Lisa ecosystem. So BTC Layer 2 has, really hasn't had that much smart contract ability. They've had some, but with a 10-minute transaction finality, think about it. When you send a transaction, it takes the same amount amount that BT Bitcoin takes um, to actually have a finalized transaction and they were building smart contract infrastructure on top of this and they're if you look at the coin they're top 26 they're a five billion dollar market cap coin and they had 10 minute transaction finality they're about to go right after the the having slash having slash interchangeable they're about to switch over to seconds per transaction so thank you Nate I appreciate the laugh dude that makes me feel good so no they're about to switch over to seconds and the benefit is that you know they're actually going to have the ability to have smart contracts and have infrastructure built out so there's throughput so whatever they did well so far at five billion dollar market cap it's about to explode and once you really understand the ecosystem i think it's going to be bullish because think about it like this for you to mine um, the Stacks ecosystem, you have to leverage BTC tokens. So basically, it's a bidding system. So what you do is you take your BTC tokens and you bid for each block as a miner. And if you basically put the most BTC into it, you get to mine that block and then you get rewarded in their native token stacks. And if you stake their token stackers, you get the bidding or the BTC that got bid by the miners to win that block. So ultimately, what I'm trying to say is, is that BTC miners now have now have their Bitcoin as a productive asset through the stakes ecosystem by by being able to use their BTC to bid on Bitcoin or on stacks blocks. So I don't know if that was way too much technical, but what I am saying is that once the BTC community gets on stacks and starts figuring out, hey, my Bitcoin's now productive and I can do something with it, it's going to be a huge win condition. So yeah, yeah, it's going to be massive, dude. The Bitcoin conversation is very exciting for me. So I'm glad Nate's tapped into that. I'm trying to learn as fast as I can. Jackson, going to throw it over to you, brother. You got anything, last, last things you want to say um, for the space or things you want to leave us with, certain tokens that you wanted to add in there? 
Oh, keep an eye on Coin Dashboard. I threw it up on the Jumbotron. Thank you guys for letting me speak, and I also learned a lot. Appreciate it. Hey, really appreciate coming on, Jackson. For real, you're a legend. Um, MSB, any last thoughts before we close this out? Well, uh, pretty much not much. Uh, thank you so much for letting me speak. But the thing is, um, watch out for the good project that's out there, and also try to be careful because um, the bottom line is this. I'm more bullish on damage, I don't know why, because of the ecosystem, as well as Saga, as well as Tomo. Um, someone actually told me I should buy some Bitcoin at home, I don't know why I actually said that shit, but <laughs> I haven't paid any financial advice, but just try and look at how the market is and just try to pull your hand. Yeah, thank you, folks. Thank you so much for letting me speak. Yeah, 100%. Guys, thank you so much for being here. This was Wolf with Three Spaces. I thought we killed it. I thought it was a great conversation. I uh, really want to say thank you to all those people on Spaces, or on, not on Spaces, on the stage. Um, really appreciate you guys. Give them a follow. They're all killing it in their game. Um, so, yeah, man. You gotta make sure you follow the speakers on the panel. or Not, not the speakers. Panel. Make sure you follow Wolf with Three, just because we have Spaces every single day. We're going to be killing it. Uh, my name is Cade. I'm hosting behind the Wolf account. Um, and yeah, we have, we have spaces all the time. Remember to uh, reach with the space because you get seven years of good luck in airdrop farming. It's been confirmed by the airdrop gods. Um, I do have, like, I got to keep the space open just for a second just because, I don't know, Charlie, if you're reading these messages, I have just... No, you're good. Close yeah. it out. Just close okay, it out. Got it's it. good. We're going to reschedule. We'll day. talk with DeFi Olio later, guys. So, okay. Sorry. Anyway. Awesome. Yeah, we're going to reschedule that. Have a wonderful day, everybody. We will see y'all tomorrow.